So if you're taking any sort of algebra course, algebra one, algebra two, things like this, you're definitely gonna have to be able to do a problem like this right here. So the question is, is can you simplify this expression? Well, if you can simplify this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. It might be a little bit difficult to actually type in the answer because we are dealing with powers and things like that, but try to do the best to kind of express your answer. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna show you the correct result to this problem here in just a moment. And then I'm gonna walk through this step by step. This is really important stuff, especially if you're at the, the algebra one level, algebra two level. This is definitely a type of problem that you should be able to handle. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this. Again, it might be a little bit difficult to type into the comment section, but nevertheless, uh, let's go ahead and simplify this expression. And when we do this correctly, this is the answer uh, you will get. So you have x to the seventh times one plus x squared over x uh, plus one. Now, if you have uh, this version, uh, you, can, you could have had x to the seventh uh, plus x to the ninth over x plus one. Uh, basically what happened there is you just distributed that uh, x to the seventh back in. This is uh, definitely acceptable as well. But uh, either answer will work. And if you did this correctly, if you got uh, one answer or the other, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars to celebrate your success in algebra today. Nice job. Okay, now uh, what is the topic here? What's, uh, uh, you know, what are we really discussing? Well, we're discussing a few things, okay? The skills you need to do this problem are factoring, okay? You need to understand uh, factoring. You need to understand what it means to simplify something, and you need to and know how to work with powers and exponents, okay? These are the kind of the critical components or the subskills to do this problem. So let's go ahead and uh, review some of these concepts by looking at an easier example of an algebra problem that hopefully you know how to do. All right, so here's the question. Can't you simplify this expression? Now, what does that mean, simplify? Well, let's take a look at a real easy example. Let's say we had the fraction 20 over 30. And I asked you to simplify that. What am I saying? Well, I'm saying to write that in a simpler way or the simplest way possible or to like reduce the fraction. So the way you would do this yeah, in your brain, you're probably like, oh, that answer is two thirds and you would be correct. But really what you're doing is you're going, okay, 20 is two times 10. You may not be uh, even aware that you're doing it this way, but you're factoring, okay? You're factoring this number and this number. So 20 is the same thing as two times 10, and 30 is the same thing as three times 10. These two numbers here are common factors. In other words, this is being separated by multiplication. This is a factor, this is a factor. These are exactly the same, so we could cross cancel these, and that leaves you with two thirds. So that is how you simplify fractions. And here what we have, it is a fraction, but technically speaking, we would call this a rational expression in algebra. But nevertheless, the key to uh, simplify this or to simplify anything that looks like a fraction is to factor. You gotta know how to factor in algebra, super important skill. And by the way, anything that I'm talking about uh, that you don't understand, make note of it. But uh, uh, probably if I had to recommend a course of mine uh, for you at this level, I would suggest like my Algebra 1 course. Okay, so here's the deal. You need to know how to factor the numerator and factor the denominator, and then we're gonna look to see if we have any common factors. So let's gonna do that right now. Okay, so here, when we um, uh, look at factoring anything in, in algebra, factoring is a huge skill. There's a lot of different um, uh, facets to factoring, but namely the first thing you always wanna do 
when you're asked to factor in algebra is to try to factor out the greatest common factor. So I'm not going to turn this into a whole factoring uh, video, but if you don't really understand what I'm doing here, in other words, how to factor uh, the numerator and denominator, then you need to review factoring uh, specifically the greatest common factor, how to factor out the GCF. That's the first thing that you need to understand when you're uh, learning factoring. Okay, you always start with the GCF and you always attempt to factor out the greatest common factor when you're looking to factor something. So what does that mean, greatest common factor? Well, let's look at uh, the numerator here. You can see this is the answer. But 4x, I can write 4x in, in terms of its factor. So I can write that as 2 times 2 times x. And then uh, 10, I can write that as 2 times 5. So what we're looking for is common factors. These are factors. These are factors. Are there any factors in common? Of course, we have a 2 and a 2, and that's the greatest number they have in common. And what's left? Well, 2x and 5. So this here is our GCF, 2, and this is what's remaining, 2x and 5. So just a quick review on how to factor out the GCF or what it means. So when I factor out, uh, when I factor 4x plus 10, I'm factoring out a 2, and I can always check this, by the way. Anytime you factor, you can always check by multiplying back in. So 2 times 2x, yes, I would get 4x, and then 2 times this 5, I would get 10. So that is correct. Okay, so now I can do the same thing down here with 2x uh, plus 6. I can factor out a 2. That leaves me with an x plus 3, and here is our work right here. But the lovely situation that we have right now is that I have my uh, numerator factored and my denominator factored, and I'm like, oh, look at this. I have common factors. I can cross cancel these, and here is the answer, okay? So this is an example, a little bit simpler example than a problem that we're looking at, uh, that when we're looking to simplify uh, fractional expressions in algebra, you have to know how to factor, and you're looking for common factors that you can cross cancel. All right, so this brings us to our problem here. You can see I already have the work uh, laid out, but let me kind of just focus in right here. So here I have x to the eighth plus x to the tenth, then I have x squared plus x. So the first thing we, thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and factor. Now let's go ahead and take uh, the numerator up here. Now we are dealing with powers. This becomes a little it becomes a little bit more complex. So uh, to, rather for me to explain how to factor out things in powers, let's just check that I factor this correctly. So if I take x to the 8th, I'm saying x to the 8th is the greatest common factor, and I multiply by 1, I'm using the distributive property here, x to the 8th times 1 is x to the 8th. Then x to the 8th times x squared is x to the 10th. Remember, when you're multiplying powers, okay, you're adding powers that have the same base. So here's x to the eighth times x squared. The rule is when the bases are the same, okay, i.e. these bottom things here, these bottom variables or numbers, whatever the case is, as long as these are the same and we're multiplying, we're adding the exponents. So the answer here is going to be 8 plus 2 or x to the tenth, okay? So when I multiply that x to the eighth back in, you're going to get back 2x to, uh, to the tenth on this part right there, okay? So you can again study that for a second. And when you are factoring, you have to get kind of creative about, okay, you're looking at these powers, you know, and you always want to take out the largest power, okay, or the largest factor. So x to the eighth would be the largest factor. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the denominator and factor out the largest thing we possibly can. And here we have an x times x, which is, of course, x squared. Here we have an x. So what is a, uh, the greatest common factor? It would just be x. So I factor out an x. That leaves me with x plus 1, right? So x times x gets it back to x squared. x uh, times 1 is x, okay? All right, so going nice and slow here because, you know, Although we are talking about factoring, we're working with powers, yeah, really, you kind of really have to slow things down. Now, the one thing you cannot do, okay, is uh, say, first of all, you can't add x squared plus x. There is no rules for adding powers, okay? So you just can't uh, be like, okay, x to the eighth. Mm, that's not, you know, so we can't add these up. There's no properties there. And you can't go like, well, x squared, maybe I can go... Uh, x squared into x to the eighth, that leaves me with x to the fourth, x squared into this, x to the fifth. That would be a very common type of mistake 
in algebra. You can't do that either. So again, the key is factoring. So at this point, we have factors. I have x to the first down here. I have x to the eighth. So what is x to the eighth? Well, it's, it's basically eight x's. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have one x here, so I can factor one x for one x, okay? This one x can take out one x, one of the eight x's up here, that leaves you with uh, seven x's or x to the seventh. Now you could technically, if you wanted to get fancy about this, you could say uh, x to the eighth divided by x to the first, and you subtract exponents, okay, which would be x to the seventh, but it basically means the same thing. So when I do this, my final answer is going to be the following, okay? I'm looking at this, oh, this x will take out, one of the x's will leave x to the seventh, so this is the final answer. And it's kind of appropriate to leave uh, your answers factored, okay? So don't feel compelled that, you know, to multiply back in. That's not necessary unless your teacher specifically asks for it. All right, but the name of the game here is, you know, uh, in algebra, you're going to have to, uh, there's, you know, basically, uh, you're going to have to depend on multiple different skills that you learn, okay? When you are studying algebra or mathematics, uh, you know, especially math, you know, when you're learning things, here, let's say these are chapters of, of an algebra course, you're like, okay, I did good in chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four was terrible, I totally didn't understand this, I hope the next chapter has nothing to do with this chapter, right? You just keep going and keep going. Uh, but guess what? You can't like just wish this away, like that was terrible. I hope I never see this again. Guess what? All these things that you learn, it's cumulative, okay? You're gonna have to learn all these skills for future problems. So that's why when you don't know something, you're like, oh, that's the thing I totally don't understand. I don't know what this, uh, I'm lost on that, I'm lost in this, I'm lost in this. If you have a little to-do list on the things that you're lost and you know specifically, that's a great starting point because then you can start like figuring this out, working on improving this, improving that, improving this. Sometimes you're only, improve, uh, you're only two or three skills away from, if you correct two or three things, to unlocking your ability to go from like a D to an A. Okay, sometimes students don't understand that because they're just stuck in this mode of like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Well, listen, fix the your weak areas and everything will get much, much better. So hopefully I can help you do that. Again, we are talking about Algebra 1 stuff here, but if you happen to be Algebra 2 uh, student or college Algebra student or even a pre-calculus student, you know, uh, I, all, I teach all this stuff in all those courses as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.